Welcome, everybody. We're back with a poll on the call. I'm Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. And, and we're I, so excited. I am, like, super so excited to be here today with Baby Stud Muffin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so, so excited. Um, so um, to start, I guess, would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, we learned... We met you as Baby Step Muffet in PSO, but would you like anybody else to know anything else about you? For sure. Um, so, hello, I'm Baby Step Muffin. Uh, in real life, I go by the name of Justin. I've been polling for four years now, and uh, I've been super happy because since um, pole dancing has really gave me a sense of community, a family, as well as it kind of gave me a personality, <laughs> which I'll talk talk to you guys a little bit more later. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I feel that way too. So I I really feel that. <laughs> yeah. <Me too. laughs> so awesome, um, Mandy. I'm do you want to start? I mean, I guess yeah. I start. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but well, I mean, you mentioned one. that you were you've been pole dancing for four years. Um, what made you get, get started into in pole dance? Yeah, that's a great question. It's actually, I would summarize it as upon serendipity. You know, <laughs> um, one night I was bored at home uh, watching YouTube videos and I actually came uh, across a bit dance video of Evgeny uh, Greshlov, uh, who is a very famous uh, Russian pole dancer, dancing to one of my favorite songs, uh, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. And the way that he uh, kind of harnessed grace and power in perfect harmony made me really, it, it really inspired me and made me think, hmm, it, he made it look not hard at all. I feel like I can do this with no effort at all. So I, the next day I signed up uh, to my very first class at Boston Pole Fitness and the rest is history. Um, I got that along, I have got gotten so far and gotten so many friends because of it. It's a really fun journey. That is awesome. I love that. OMG, I'm going to need that link to that pole dancer. I feel like I've heard of him years ago, but I haven't seen him in a while. So I would love to see that again. <laughs> and so you, you say like it, it seemed like really easy. Was it really easy for you when you first started? <laughs> um, I Let me just say that I got uh, so crushed so much during the first few classes because uh, even though pole dancers makes... Um, makes defying gravity look so easy. The actual uh, mechanics of movements is not easy at all. Since like, no matter whether or not you're a dancer or a person who hasn't moved a lot in the, your past life, um, to move with a instrument and around an instrument and to maneuver around it gracefully is not necessarily uh, natural for anyone. So just by learning how to um, walk around the pole without looking like you have two left legs is a big challenge for me. And coming from a uh, person who has not taken any dan dance classes before I take my very first pole class, it was really eye-opening. But I guess um, that, that video of um, that Russian pole dancer dancing really informed my uh, principle of how I view po pole dancing and how I think pole dancing as an art should be. Um, so from that day forward, even though I did struggle a lot, um, I try to strive for that perfect balance of dance and art and strength. Love do it. Have, do you have a history with a little history with dance before? Or was like this your first time getting into it? Pole dancing class is actually my very, very first dance class in my entire life. So it informs my movement pattern very greatly. And I think that this is the beauty of pole dancing, right? You don't have to be a professional dancer to really work hard and put in the work to ex excel at what you like and what you do. Yes. Yeah, I think it really allows like everyone who is a dancer inside to have it to come out because maybe like dancing on the ground is, you know, 
<laughs> without an apparatus doesn't interest us as much as um, you know when we see everyone flying around the pole. <laughs> Yeah. We're just walking as long as yeah. you're know, having fun, right? Just yes. yeah. yeah, there's nothing more. I know. To yes. work with the you're right. There are some pole walks that make me want to be like, yeah, I want to just hop on. <laughs> They're yeah. not even in the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> awesome. So I think I just asked one. Do you want to ask one? Or I could ask another one. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so you didn't have any dance background or anything? Were you into um, gymnastics or any others? Like fitness, do you go to the gym? Ah, uh, that's a good question, right? Uh, before uh, joining pole dancing, I really did not have much uh, hobby, really. So I really did not move. Uh, I'm not a good mover. When I was a child, I did not play sports. Um, that's not surprising, but you know. Um, so pole dancing is really the very first uh, movement um, oriented sports or fitness that I got myself engrossed in. So, uh, at first, I have zero upper body strength, and I don't know how to hold myself up. And the idea of climbing a pole from the floor up and nonstop to reach the ceiling is a miracle to me. Um, so, but um, I, I am really into the art of pole dancing and see how people just really put in the work to uh, express themselves in any way they can really inspired me to uh, work work out and join other type of sports and also taking yoga classes to supplement my journey of pole because I do think that without proper tra weight training or flexibility training, it will take a very, very long time for anyone to prog progress appropriately in a timely manner uh, in pole dancing. So to answer your question, um, while I didn't have any uh, movement background, now I take uh, CrossFit training as well as like Taekwondo, which is a martial art that requires a lot of flexibility to uh, support my pole journey. And I re recommend people do that too. For sure, I'm yeah. I've always wanted to start some kind of martial arts because I know it's incredible with physical strength and flexibility. So I'm glad that you share that that's incredible so you really did go from like just nothing to like seeing that video and then being like now i'm this <laughs> that's so awesome now look at me <laughs> right? that's really so awesome. went all in <laughs> that's awesome i was talking, I was oh, talking okay. to one of my friends um who is also one of my uh, my coach and um three years down the road of um pulled pole dancing I was I I told him huh look at me my body is really built for you know, to be a pole dancer and to to which he responded you really worked hard to train so that you can pole dance and I think that you know having a goal and determination of where you want to be really uh kind of alleviates all these strains and like challenges that comes with pole dancing training right as long as you have a goal to work towards um the rest is history um you will feel empowered and driven to put in the work to um train as a weightlifter or a taekwondo artist just so that you can achieve all those pole moves that is simply badassery. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us do have like the poll has changed my life story. Um, it's just uh, so special. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it, adds, it instills so much discipline and resilience. It really kind of helps you kind of put your goals into a perspective. Mm. Yes. And then, so now you, you explained that now you have like a fitness regimen. Do you want to talk about kind of what keeps you in shape for a pole? Yeah. Uh, so um, I do a lot of open workouts. So training on my own um, at least three days a week. And then I go to, uh, before, before the um, open workout, I would go to uh, CrossFit to 
do a lot of uh, weightlifting exercises and I see it as a warm up for my uh, pole, pole exercises. And sometimes I, uh, and for two days a week, I go to, to Taekwondo so that I can stretch and get my splits eventually. <laughs> you know how I, I try to use every part of my uh, free time to really harness the, um, my body so that my body can eventually achieve to, uh, my nemesis moves and all the pole goals that I set for myself. I love that. It's so important that we cross train and I love that you do that and share that because we forget, even I'd forget. And which brings me to your pole nemesis that you already brought it up. What are your pole nemesis and your pole goals? Okay, that's, I have a lot of uh, nemesis. Uh, right now, um, I'm working on fungies. And, you know, it's really, really difficult. But, you know, my training philosophy has always been just do break it down into incremental little pieces so that you can work on it, improve the little piece, for example, um, casting or like, re uh, re grab just little, little goals that makes you feel like your your nemesis is still uh, attainable, but still challenging so that it keeps yourself from uh, being burnt out, but still being inspired. And other than that, I am interested in learning how to do a broken split, which is a very flexibility driven move where you basically break your shoulder and you know, getting into it. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are my two um, nemesis. In terms of my pole goals, I am working on a piece or maybe two pieces to compete in PSO again, uh, either entertainment level four or championship level five. That is so exciting, OMG. I love it all. Like the fungi, I can't even believe you said that because I was looking at it. I was like, I want to do that this year, but I have no idea if I could do that. So it's inspiring that you're trying it and working on it and conditioning on it. And I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so right, so there are progressions though for, for every level. So you, if you want those bigger yeah. tricks, you know, yeah. you have to start at the bottom and then you, you keep working it and then... <laughs> I know. I can't wait to see. OMG, so exciting. Um, speaking of PSO, you said you're working on some new pieces. Before we talk about those new pieces, let us talk about this past PSO in November, your experience and the amazingness, because I was I felt so blessed that we were able to watch it. Um, even Mandy, you were able to watch it, and it was such a beautiful piece. Um, you really kind of just gave it your all, your soul, told your story, actually shed a tear, which is rare for me. <laughs> um, so it um, do you want to share that, um, share the process of making it and share the whole experience and the win and everything? I love it. Well, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to bring something to the to the stage that left an impact to my um, audiences because I do feel like um, the reason why I compete is to actually um, present a, a testimony testimony of how hard how hard work can. Um, uh, transform into something beautiful. Um, so in the, by, by the end of 2000, 2020, I feel like I have been training pole dancing for three years. And every year pre-COVID, my studio body and pole would host a few PSO run through uh, for all the competitors days before their competition. And as a young uh, pole dancing, uh, person, pole dancer, I was able to see how the big dog um, put on their best to snatch the trophy. And that really inspired me to, to be something that I can, I see, see it is possible for me to, to, to do. So um, in 2021, uh, I decided to uh, sign up for this competition, not only to show 
my my coaches and my friends that I have I have transformed so much, but also to tell a very honest story to really uh, to be be brave enough to be vulnerable and honest to show my uh, most stigmatized part of my identity. And, you know, I used the stage as a portal to tell the story of me being diagnosed as HIV positive, as well as me fighting off um, depression, of course, uh, the training. And I think that it's very important for me to serve a meaning or purpose for this uh, performance so that I don't get burnt out because the the process of selecting an, a concept and then creating a whole routine uh, without a dance background and then continuously failing and falling out of a tricks and then still uh, pushing through during the training, the process is very um, tedious, but uh, as long as I believe in the outcome or the intention of this uh, performance is to not only tell my story, but also uh, tell my audience that it's okay. Uh, like uh, life, living with HIV can be very, very depressing and hard, difficult, but um, there's always hope as long as you fight. So that really motivated me a lot to getting that story out there. And my coach, uh, Donna Carnell, which, who is a very formidable pole artist, helped me a lot in refining the piece. And during the competition day, I remember I was really nervous, but everybody at PSO has been so supportive. Um, that really made me feel good and empowered enough to really put through the piece. And um, usually in real life, um, whenever I disclose my HIV status, um, someone just kind of kind of evaporates and disappear. But you know the um, the stage PSO was able to provide really was a indeed empowering experience. I remember so many people come up to me telling me that I am I was doing great and how my piece touched their soul, and I was able to meet you, uh, which is really, really surprisingly pleasant. And I feel very blessed to have this opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing that and for sharing your vulnerability and everything going on. Um, I'm a big HIV advocate living with HIV myself. Um, and I know online advocacy is very hard and just what you did with creating a piece with it a dance piece we all got the story we all understood what was going on and it all gave us emotion with incredible tricks incredible transitions um it was really what i wanted to do and didn't know how to do it and express and you just like inspired me and even my partner who says hi by the way <laughs> um, um you just like inspired us to just not only have fun with pole dancing, but really, truly, truly tell your story and really nail it in the head. Like, this is who I am. And this is my story. And this is what I made of it. Because yeah, you had HIV, but <laughs> you LDS anybody there. So that was like incredible. Um, and I want to thank you personally for sharing that. You have inspired me as a dancer and as an HIV advocate. So thank you, truly. Thank you for having me. Yes. Awesome. So I can't even remember who asked the last question. Is it your turn? <laughs> <Andy? laughs> well, we can talk about since we're we're on the PSO loop, we can talk about maybe your upcoming performances. Maybe yes. you can give us a sneak peek idea. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, so my the current um, piece that I'm working on is for championship level five. Um, of course, it's it's exciting to progress and um, compete in a um, in a level above what, what which you have competed before. Um, the concept will be, will be a continuation of what. Um, what my performance at PSO in the past. In the, in the past piece, I was 
kind of being willing to be vulnerable and emotional and still uh, fighting off a, a adversity, for example, HIV positive, being HIV positive. And the next piece I'm looking at is to embody um, the spirit of badassery. You know, uh, now, now that I have triumphed my stigma, now it's time for me to flourish and um, t let the people know that um, I, I don't care what other people think and uh, I'm here to own the stage and because I am awesome, even if I live with this stigmatizing condition. So the music will be breathe by Zappo and it will be a lot of power tricks and a lot of um, powerful transitions because the concept will be, I am the star and you can't stop me. Yes. Oh, yes. I love that. And which PSO will this be, if you don't mind sharing? Say again, I'm sorry? Which PSO will this be, if you don't mind sharing that? It's either in Philly or next year, because I want to have it something good to showcase the world instead of having something rushed. Oh, that's that brings me to one of the things that I want to talk to, uh, to you about, uh, rather uh, why I chose competing versus um, uh, performances because um, PSO is really, as you guys know, PSO has been a very supportive um, um, stage for novice or experienced um, competitors. And whenever I put something out or a piece out, I want to have the control over uh, thinking through the concept and really create something really make that makes sense to the audience, but also uh, I want to deliver it with perfect finesse. So joining competition and having a timeline that you can control and you can take the time to plan out and execute the training is what, what attracts me to the route of competition rather than um, performances, not because performances is less appealing. It's just that I'm a stress, uh, I'm, I usually am stressed out easily. So performance can be a little stressful timeline wise. That's okay. so interesting. <laughs> yeah, we, PSO is so awesome. We're so I thankful know. and like they're everywhere <laughs> and they're even know. online. It's so accessible and anyone could have like a platform for um, whatever's in your heart. Facts. Which brings me up to the next question. Is there any like tidbit or advice you might give someone who's thinking about competing or who might be scared who or who already competed and it like went awful and they don't want to ever do it again? <laughs> yeah. So if you if you fail at doing something, my typical go to comment is do it again, because uh, right now as soon as you can because if you don't you will never do it and when you lose the opportunity to you will regret it because if you don't do it you'll never know what will happen you might fail but you might as well uh win um from and i have a lot of i, I have given a lot of thoughts to this um from a um overall our overarching level for a comp to join a competition is a very emotionally and physically draining up um, journey and it's gonna be a lot more difficult than you think because it has a lot more tiny granular details of things that you need to go through from music to prop to uh, choreography so not only when you're com deciding to compete but also training for uh, comp, um, pole dancing, you need to have a clear idea of what your relationship with pole is and why you're pole dancing. Having that very clear idea of like why pole dancing appeals to you and what it gives to me, a uh, gifts to you, will always trump all those little challenges that will and wrenches that uh, pole, joining a pole dancing competition will throw at you. And, you know, uh, for me to understand that um, 
pole dancing really gave me a community who care about me and uh, it gave me an I'm just simply happy whenever I am doing a pole tricks. It's enough for me to uh, keep on pole dancing, joining competition or keep on pole dancing. And the fact that uh, junior comp comp competitors should not see, see joining a competition as an end goal, but rather a just a, a milestone so that you have a goal to keep on working towards instead of being burnt out and quit pole dancing uh, altogether. That is also why I decided to keep on competing in championship level five, because I just want the, um, the goals to work towards uh, rather than having all these excuses in life like, oh, I'm too busy. Oh my gosh, these tricks are too hard. I will never achieve it. It's very easy for you to lose sight and quit pole easily, but competition really give you that opportunity to harness what you want to do. And also uh, in a granular level for uh, a junior comp competitor should really pay a close attention to the rule book and to understand, as you said, the differences between the artistic um, scoring system versus championship and to whether or not you can switch, whether or not you can switch the uh, position of swim pole uh, spin pole versus static pole, and also try to uh, arrive early so that pole testing is very, very important um, because you never know how spin pole will react. Um, if you don't, I don't know if Chris, you remember this, but in our competition, uh, the spin pole just spin like there's no tomorrow. So. Yes, OMG, it was, it was so interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and never give up during the performance. Never give up because sure. people are there not to talk you down, but they want to see you succeed. You're gonna dishonor your 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 audience if you just give up once if you can't do a trick. Yes, and like he said, that spin pole beware, y'all. It's faster than you think. <laughs> 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 I almost died when I went into my end where I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> it was so awesome. Thank you for it's sharing great. that. Hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on well, they had warned us. They're like, it's faster than your studio pole. I was like, okay, it can't be that fast because the studio poles are already fast. And <laughs> yeah, they weren't kidding. <laughs> they always feel like lighter too. I'm always like, oh. Is this gonna be like? Is this gonna be okay? The whole thing's like. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's terrifying because uh, it's like uh, the pole doesn't necessarily connect to the ceiling, so that when you look up, you usually expect a ceiling uh, that is like on the top of your pole. But when you look up at the top of the pole, and the ceiling is really, really up high, and it's a very trippy, in in the middle of uh, the competition. That's just my side note. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't look up because, like you said, you see the ceiling, and then you see the bars it's attached to shaking as you pull. <laughs> <laughs> right and that like that combined with all the adrenaline that's happening you're just like ah. <laughs> well let's get into um do you have like a favorite style of pole you do mostly contemporary um i am i have a philosophy of training where i want to train every style uh there is so that i can be as as rounded as possible, you know, uh, but I'm not doing a good job at it. But my favorite pole, uh, uh, pole um, my favorite pole style would be uh, contemporary or any type of uh, pole dancer who combines the musicality and choreography with the pole tricks, you know. I want, pole, to me, pole dancing is called pole dan dancing, not only because there's uh, a need for a lot of pole tricks, but also uh, you need to harness it with a lot of soft scale of musicality and um, movement to make it interesting, right? Um, for example, again, going back to what you should do in competition, not only you need to do what you do well, but you also need to have a very 
general or of overarching um, perception of whether or not your piece it has a concept, whether or not it is it has flexibility, strain, or dance, as well as floor work, and whether or not these five different uh, factors goes well together where your movement pattern or your routine has an overarching system or a coherence so that it leaves a leaves your audience whether or not you're, you're competing or performing at all you know excellent yeah. I love it. We all try to be well-rounded, but it is so very hard. Yeah. But pole <laughs> is, is a journey. It's fine. I know. Facts. <laughs> Sometimes um, you have to go with two, uh, one step forward, two step back. You exactly. Know? Yeah. <laughs> do you I, gravitate toward um, more flexible moves or do you enjoy more strength-based? My body is gravitate towards a uh, strength-based move, but I try to uh, do as much flexibility uh, tricks as I can because I only have splits. So I over, uh, over do a, an overkill on splitting moves whenever I can. So that keeps it interesting instead of just, okay, one power move after another power move that that way, you know, audience lose interests. <laughs> and you're not out of breath. <laughs> That's, that is very important too. Sometimes I forget how to breathe during <laughs> everyone yeah we all I know, no one I I, i'm glad to know that's all of us not just me too <laughs> <laughs> even though we all know it's so much better when we do breathe <laughs> yeah i know i yeah. think we're just in the moment yeah. <laughs> um um do you want to take another question chris sure um so i guess tell us about your like pole training style and your philosophy like is there specific things you have to do or that anything <laughs> like yeah. A routine? yeah so i always warm up beforehand because i have thrown my shoulder out before uh, before without uh, warming up that's very important so that's my one routine that I cannot live without every time I train myself. And like I said before, I try to take a generalist uh, approach in training. I train a lot of different uh, type of styles. So that just, just so that I'm not bored, but also my body has different vocabulary of different tricks, right? I even uh, throw on a pair of uh, shoot, like heels once in a, in a blue moon to try to be sexy. Um, but, um, you, you know, in a granular level, I think I usually come to the training with a list of, you know, list of movements that I wanted, what I wanted, what I want to train, but also uh, to organize them with by body parts with a progression of uh, difficulty so that I can build one movement onto the next. For example, uh, if I were to work on spin pull today, I might just zero in on a lot of splits or stuff like that so that my body is warm enough to progress into harder tricks that has uh, that involves splits and if i were to uh, for example i will start with jade and then i go to a brass monkey split and then other um, broken splits to uh, bondage splits you know those progression of difficulty of tricks and and then I will also do, and then when it comes to strength stuff, then I will just do a lot of, um, to, in a similar vein, I would organize my tricks into uh, difficulties and really shouldering um, um, zero in on shoulder movement or uh, leg hangs so that, you know, you don't jump, jump between um, body parts where your body is cold and not sticky. That's not very efficient. But overall, if you are not sure about organizing, I just strongly recommend you come in with a list of, at least a list of movements so that you know what to work on. Because if without a list, what will always happen is that you will stare at yourself in the mirror for 30 minutes, not knowing what to do. And um, that's not very efficient. I hope that my advice will help. Yes, I love that you say, you know, bring a list because, you know, something might be working and then you'll just go to the next thing and go to the next thing. And 
and whatever will happen, at least you had your plan. <laughs> yes, I love it. I find um, for some students and even teachers, lists help and they don't know it until they actually try it, <laughs> until they actually start making and bringing the list. It's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, I love hearing about um, everyone's different training styles too, because um, that's what I mean, I'm going to try your training style. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit different than mine, so I'm gonna see if it works out for me. Um, yeah. I love it. <laughs> and then do you have a, a particular um, pole hand grip that you like the best? Yeah. I prepared for you. <laughs> This little thing, um, I tried a lot of um, products, but my favorite is, of course, the classic dry hand. I like to apply it all over my hands. I personally think that I personally have very dry, uh, very sweaty palms. So I apply it in, let's see, I apply it on my um, hands and I, I think that it creates enough grip so that I don't slip, but it does not create too much grip where I cannot do any power spins. And then um, I also, during competitions, I use a lot of eye tag on my, the rest of my body. I shower myself with it. So on my body, not my hand, so that I stick to the pole because during the competition, it usually the venue usually will be very very cold, and uh, do you might be nervous so that your feet might be uh, very cold too. So a lot of eye tag will help tremendously for you to stick onto the pole instead of falling to your death. Um, these are the two uh, two pole grips that I like to use that creates the most consistent. Uh, texture and stickiness because some other brands might create or have difference in their consistencies or sometimes it will be very slippery or sometimes it will be too sticky but these are the two best ones I use that I use excellent yeah and again everyone's got their own recipe of yeah. of different groups that they use and it just goes to show you everyone's body is different so if you're a new polar and and you're listening um you gotta it's interesting that it doesn't like switch on you <laughs> that's the first time i heard that this is my two and that's it <laughs> usually I hear that it like switches every time of the year and stuff like you know what I, you understand so that's awesome lucky <laughs> <laughs> right that's true mine does my the back of my knee pits don't ever stick in the winter no matter what facts i feel like every season i need like a new grip um it's just it's crazy <laughs> yeah i have to like run a, around the studio just so that I, i'm sticky enough to stick for a like hang during this winter you know new england winter and new york winter is no joke Wow. <laughs> for real <laughs> well i i can do the next question if you want to chris unless you've got another one um i don't mind um you can uh plans <laughs> for that's the one i was gonna ask okay uh so <laughs> i'll ask what is your regular day superhuman job and power <laughs> My day-to-day -day job is that I, I'm a medical science uh, researcher, so um, I help uh, other comp pharma, pharma company to create a solution for their, you know, medication development. That is awesome. Oh, I'm a scientist during the day and a dancer at night. I love it. I try. <laughs> Do you find that your science background helped you with pole? Um, yes. Like your physics? I only <laughs> took two physics classes oh, okay. uh, in high school, and these are the two only classes that I got to see with for my entire high school career. But, you know, I did a, did a lot of social science, but, uh, you know, just a lot of, you know, introspection of why uh, not make, making sure that you're not burnt out or being flustered with yourself when you're like uh, training a pole move and, you know, just um, that helps a lot in a lot of organizing and, you know, planning on your daily training will help a lot, a lot as well, but it doesn't really require a science 
um, background to do that. It's just that it comes it comes with experience. <laughs> I'm always so interested. We we had um, a physics and and pole <laughs> lesson at our studio, and it was really cool to see. Um, we we taught it to physics people, and then we taught it to pole dancers, and it was cool to see like the differences between everyone. But <laughs> <laughs> so it just was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite uh, favorite pole dancer, Don, Donna Carnell, was uh, uh, was in pre med, and it was in the home. my interaction with her will always be very uh, interesting. Instead of uh, telling me to point my toes and my foot, she will be like, "Point your meta torso." <laughs> it's fun time. It's 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 fun uh, fun to see how many different people with different walks of life get united and really bond over the art of pole dancing. And really, you know, we are all beautiful people and somehow it, pole just brings us together, you know? That's so true. You see that like in our studio too, there's like all different, we have different jobs on the outside. We come in and we're all together, just dancing it out. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Same. do you, um, you you don't teach at the moment. Do you ever have any plans to teach in the future? Yeah. If you guys would like to hire me, I would love to. But right now, I'm just uh, put, uh, focusing on uh, training on my own pole dancing journey, as well as maybe getting elevated by uh, through one of our studios, so that I am qualified to teach eventually. Nice. Nice. Then, That's excited. For the, the future of competitions, do you see yourself um, doing other competitions other than PSO or just just PSO? That's a very good question. Like maybe um, like worlds? Yes, world <laughs> pole. Yeah. One step at a time. Right now, PSO has been a sufficient stage for me, but uh, I, I've been looking at Mr. Pole Dance, and I think, Chris, you should look into it too. You know, I was actually thinking about it, so I'm glad you said it. But right now, I'm training for uh, IPSF World Poe. When is Mr. Poe? What? When is Mr. Poe? Mr. Poe is a competition just for male pole dancers. And the concept of it is very, uh, they support a lot of creative expressions and they uh -huh. have a lot of emphasis on artistry and how you package yourself as a performer. And when is this supposed to be? Uh, let me check. I, I'll get back to you on that. But okay. I, uh, there is a competition in Aust Australia. I could be lying, but I think it would be a good um, portal for you. That would be fun. I have actually thought about it. Um, I just never went about to look into it my the next one was pole circus which we just did and then world pole ipsf so let's do the mr pole together yes. <laughs> i love it yeah, really awesome. nice. and miss mandy mack you could do miss po is it miss poor mrs po <laughs> <laughs> or like every other pole competition <laughs> <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> that's the we should talk about that too like the, the opportunities for men in pole dance because it's kind of like right there's not too many i mean now we have um more men than than we used to have at our studio thanks to chris you know the representation of having chris you, maybe in, <laughs> <laughs> you know like um do you want to talk about any of that how you how it's been for you it has been really uh, inspiring because it is true that in any any pole dancers requires a, a lot of support during this very difficult training day to day but also for com any kind of competition or performances in addition to teaching so um it's important for you to anyone to have a um, idol pole idol or the idol instructor that you relate to um, so that you keep on being inspired and remember why you're doing pole dancing uh, to begin with. And like, uh, like Chris being the male um, representation in your studio, I was first introduced and really sucked into the pole 
uh, pole dancing world by one of my earliest mentor, Ar uh, Armando, uh, who is one of the only male pole dancer in, um, in the studio. And I was really um, inspired by his style. And later on, he, he became my best friend. And we, we just talked this, uh, this morning. So there's a lot of support going on. And I think that there is an, there's a need for male, more male pole dancers to bond, bond together, to share our journey together, because, you know, uh, pole dancing is hard. And ne it's never a bad thing to have more friends who share the common passion for pole dancing. It's rare to come by, but once they, you do, we, we do click and the bond usually lasts forever and that accelerates and uh, catalyze the, uh, um, your progression in pole dancing as well. It's very beneficial. I love yes. it. Thank you so much for that. We're going to have to do a piece on male pole dancers. <laughs> yes. And I right. know this to be the pre president of the uh, male pole dancing club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OMG. I think a new podcast coming, the male pole dancers, why you should do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love it so much. Yeah, and pole dance is for everyone. So we really do need all sorts of everyone to just, you know, show your authentic yeah. selves, see your authentic selves, and you'll inspire everyone. And everyone will, you know, everyone will benefit from that for sure. Yeah, there are other organizations being created too. I'm sure that you have heard Black Girls Pole. Yes. And I think that yes. Day Phoenix, one of the New York City based uh, pole, pole artists, uh, created this organization for Black Men Pole. So uh, there are supports, but it, it's never too late to reach out and connect with each other, right? Because we sure. share the love and we are fighting in the fight. Yes. Yes. It's finest. Yeah. I feel like as male pole dancers, we're already a minority. Um, and I understand why we have to separate it more, but why not just combine it to all male pole dancers? Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. All right. Then the last question that I have, do you have any more questions, Chris? Um, I do. What are your, I hope this isn't your question. Um, no, you already told me your question. Do you have any, um, like, what are your other hobbies? Like, do you play an instrument? Do you have pets? Um, do you paint, draw, anything at all? So I have a cat. Um, I had it for a, him for a year now. My friends just picked him up off the street of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, out of the uh, total impulse, I just took him without even knowing what he looks like but he's such a pandemic product a uh, pet product you know but uh he turned out to be the best blessing of, of my life because he has been there every day with me and whenever i have like any difficulties or like uh, feeling down he's always there for me so he's my my little baby his name is maluma because he's sexy like a tiger OMG, Maluma is my favorite too. You are preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> my partner, Ron, has to send me a picture. Every time he crosses it, this is your man. <laughs> it's too funny. You must be looking forward to his new movie, huh? I just like learned about that last week and I don't even know the full thing. I saw like the image of him and J-Lo. I was like, is this shit real? And then swipes. <laughs> it should be, it should be good. You'll like it. <laughs> it should be, it'll be interesting. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I do. I do Taekwondo, I do CrossFit and yeah, that. That's a, pl uh, a handful already. <laughs> right. That is a lot. That's a lot of hobbies. And, and then they all intermesh into the, the wonderfulness that is you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what, what do you have? I mean, besides the competitions and maybe um, teaching in the future, do you have any more plans for the future of the pole world? Mm, just 
get to know more people and really connect with all the pole stars and people who are aspired to um, pole dance or aspire to compete. Um, you know, the pole dancing, uh, pole dance world, especially men who pole dance has been uh, very supportive of me and each other in general. Uh, so I can't wait to give back, you know. Um, for example, Bren, uh, Bren Muffin, who is a instructor in BC, I believe, uh, Brendan Weathers. Um, I haven't met him once in, in real life, but he Bren was Muffin? Yeah, we, we and baby said muffin. Yes, we kid each other to be the house of muffins, <laughs> and he is the house father. <laughs> yeah, um, he was. He surprised me by not only remembering when I was going to compete, but also he asked two of his students to say hi to me. I felt very special and loved by by the support that are given to me by all these pole stars as well as pole co members of the pole community get to me and to me it's just more rewarding than just presenting my artwork to a, an, a group of audience but rather to have the connection with all the people and create a network that it will support you along the way. That's true. I'm, I'm really glad you said that because a lot of us get wrapped up in the competition aspect of it and we forget that it's fun and it's about community and just always remembering that, um, you know, and what it what it gives to us rather than, you know, a lot of times what we what we've given out. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to all my friends who came to support me. And yeah, it's just a really good opportunity to show you that people cares about you and you have a really good strong network of support that that is just the side benefits that usually gets overlooked but it's really important and there's not not a, not a lot of other opportunity that uh compared to the comp pso competition can offer excellent nice well thank you so much for sharing that and for for sharing your story. Um, Chris, do you have anything else? Lord, um, goodness, I don't think so. I'm excited. I think me and Rob are scheduling a trip to New York in March to hopefully visit the, your studio and hopefully we'll get to see you and pole dance with you. Um, this has been awesome. I cannot wait to see your next performance, to be honest. Um, is there anything else you want to give the listeners, like any tidbits, anything about yourself, anything you want people to hear, anything you want to preach about or advocacy for anything? Just one final note. Follow me on Instagram and on uh, TikTok, muffin underscore poppy. <laughs> I love that we're going to have that in the links below. Muffin underscore poppy. <laughs> and really be nice to each other, even though we really have different expression of whole arts and we kind of discover different ways of developing ourselves as a pole artist, given that we have different uh, past, different body type, um, and we have different routes of uh, showcasing our talent, whether or not through teaching, through uh, competition through um, performing or working at a club. Um, the, the community is very small. So uh, rather than uh, emphasizing the differences, maybe we can come together and support each other. And you know, the people you meet today, you never know uh, when you'll see, see them again. You know, it's a small community. So work with each other, be kind to each other. It's, you know, um, I started pole dancing in Boston a few years ago, and uh, just a month ago, I got to see Stacy, the, the owner of Boston Pole Fitness and in a performance venue in New York. And it was surreal to share that nostalgic connection and still being able to showcase how much we both have grown in a different direction while still sharing the love and support of, or passion towards pole dancing art, you know? 
I love that you share that. You're so right. We are such a very small community and we really do need to support each other because people will know you without you knowing they know you. I've learned that very fast in the last year. So yes, be kind to everyone. Like he said, support each other. We're such a small group knit community already it's bad enough we're fighting to make pole an official sport and in the olympics so why should we fight each other based on our styles and our differences thank you so much for sharing that i love that yes i agree i guess i mean that that could conclude our interview (laughs) (laughs) i (laughs) know I love it. This was so much Thank fun. Thank you so much. It was, it was so much fun to talk to you and, and learn about your, your journey and, and your story. And also, but, um, you know, I wanted to also say thank you so much for your PSO piece and for expressing um, your authenticity. And, you know, it's really appreciated for a lot of people. So, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much. I was so excited um, that we got to ask you and that you said yes, because I've we've like communicated via message, but I've actually wanted to have like an in-depth conversation with you. And it's been such an awesome time hanging out and getting to know you and kind of virtually chilling. Yes. <laughs> I'd also yes. more yeah. than, uh, in coming month. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully we can pull together again really, really soon. And yes, have another fangirl moment. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna fangirl each other. Yeah. Yes. Definitely, Mr. Poe. Here we come. I'm excited. The muffin <laughs> tour. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Little, we have a little signing off. You can join us now for this. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for this episode of of poll on the call i'm mandy mack i'm chris rivers and then baby stud muffin (laughs) baby stud muffin and we are signing off signing off (laughs) thank you guys all right thank Thank you so much